Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Next Goal Wins. Today we're talking Champions League football again. It was the second match night tonight. We're going to talk about the games that happened. So first off, let's talk about the game that people will be most interested about. Dynamo Zagreb beat Arsenal 2-1. This is Zagreb's first win in the Champions League. A massive, massive win for them. They've been waiting 13 years, I think it is, for this win and it's massive for its come from. And against such a big team like Arsenal, Arsenal obviously will have been expecting more and will have hoped for more and... It's a really poor result for them to start their campaign like this. I mean, all the European teams to, to win against. And Arsenal's one that Dynamo wouldn't have expected of all the teams they've played. But 2-1 at home. They were 2-0 down Arsenal. They had Giroud sent off as well. Giroud got sent off first for a, for a high elbow and secondly for a, another yellow. Got two yellows. Eventually got sent off. And it kind of summed up Arsenal's night. They were poor. The only consolation they got was through Theo Walcott. Obviously, he was the striker who played where Giroud would have played. He burst through, could have been offside debatable and slotted it past the keeper. Really nice finish from Walcott, but they were poor the whole night from, from what I could see Arsenal. And they didn't look to be in control of the game at any stage. They started the game really brightly, but obviously they fell two goals behind to Zagreb and couldn't get it back. And Arsenal, they must be thinking now, why didn't Wenger buy an outfield player? They've struggled in the league in a few games and they've now struggled in Europe and it really has shown that their squad strength in depth just isn't good enough for European competition and for club competition and I think it's a real issue that Wenger just didn't resolve and through stubbornness or whatever it was he just didn't resolve it and he should have resolved it because it, it was a, a matter that needed to be resolved. Next up though another team I didn't think did well in the transfer window but did well tonight Chelsea the other English team the only English team to have won in the Champions League. They won 4-0 at home to Maccabi Tel Aviv, a side that featured uh, Ben Talaim, who used to play in the Premier League, love you know, with, with Bolton and Portsmouth and Chelsea, ironically. But he gives away uh, a, a penalty, sorry, he doesn't give away, the goalkeeper gives away a penalty. First few minutes and Hazard steps up to take it. Hazard's had a really poor season so far and he misses the penalty. Hazard misses the penalty, not really sure what he's doing, blazes it over the bar. And you're thinking, oh, is it going to be one of those nights for Chelsea? You shouldn't think so because the ball that got in for, for, the, for the foul from a goalkeeper indicated what they could do on this night Chelsea. They had a lot of space in behind. Then they do get four goals eventually. Fabregas gets one. Oscar gets a penalty. Diego Costa gets one. I think it's Remy who gets the other one. And it's a, a night for, for Chelsea that is what they needed. They have to start winning games. And they had to start winning games now and they couldn't wait any longer. Maccabi Tel Aviv at home is a game they expected to win, they had to win and they did win it. Mourinho I'm sure will be happy just to get a win under their belt. But all in all, like I said, the main thing is just to get three points and a bit of confidence in that team. Fabregas spoke after the game and he seemed really, really unhappy still and kind of frustrated at the situation that was going on. And that has to improve if Chelsea want to feature in Europe and in domestic competition this season. The biggest game of the night... Then the next game we're going to talk about is Roma against Barcelona. It was the biggest game because of the two biggest teams playing against each other. Uh, Barcelona, obviously defending champions, we all know what they bring. Neymar, Messi, Suarez. The two of those three didn't threaten really tonight. Messi played a lot of good balls, but Neymar was really ineffective. And apart from his goal, Suarez was ineffective. Suarez had a header that he scored from about two inches out, but he couldn't have missed. Ball gets played over wide. Eventually it comes to a far post to Suarez. He nods it in. They go 1-0 up against Roma away and you're thinking it's going to be what happens whenever big teams come to Rome. They'd knock Roma off like Bayern did 7-1 and it didn't turn out that way. Rudy Garcia's side have really grown into a good side. Dzeko up front is a real key for them because he offers them something different. They've got pace going forward in Mohamed Salah and obviously a player Chelsea sent out on loan and was at Fiorentina last season and was really good in the Europa League with his pace but they've got pace through him. And it helped them in the second half. A young Italian man, Alberto Ferenzi, Alessandro Ferenzi, I say, the player who a lot of people have been raving about in Italy is the next kind of big thing. Right back, an amazing lob goal from 40 yards to Stegen's off his line. He's at right back, flies it over to Stegen, hits the post and goes in. A great, great goal. Got to be goal of the night. There's a few contenders, but it was an unbelievable goal. What a strike to beat to Stegen. Obviously, he won save of the year last year, UEFA save of the year, so this won't be in his contentions for anywhere near save of the year this year, but it could be goal of the year in UEFA competition. It's a wonderful, wonderful lob from Ferenzi, and it was because he meant it that made it so special. It was a great goal, and that's how the game finished, 1-0. Roma and Barca, I think, will be happy with the point because it doesn't really do anything 
derogatory to their campaigns by uh, Barca. Sorry, we'll see it as a good point away from Rome. And Roma will see it as a good point against Barcelona. Next game then, another big team. Bayern Munich played away to Olympiacos. People always say it's a really tough place to go. Greece, the, the horrible cliche, it's a tough place to go. Even our old web said it today on, uh, on BT Sport. Yes, it's a tough place to go because of the absolute partisan crowd, but Bayern didn't seem to bother them. They've got people who are quality at football, and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what the fans are like if you're better at football than the other team. Thomas Muller steps up, gets a few goals again. A few, uh, a few goals that Muller seems to be putting in every game this season. He's in Ronaldo's quality this season of scoring goals, game in, game out. I'm sure he scored goals in every game he's played in almost, and... Muller has come on as a player, that's why people talk about his 100 million that people can spend on him. But you look at his record, he's got 10 World Cup goals, nearly leading goalscorer in European qualifying this season. So he really is a classy striker now. You can't class him as a winger or a centre forward, like sitting off as striker as you could for a few years. He really is now an out and out striker who's a goalscorer if Lewandowski doesn't get some for Bayern. But Guardiola's steam train keeps rolling. After a bit of a poor start in the domestic leagues, but winning late on, they've got this big win under the belt away in Europe, which will settle a lot of nerves going in through this group. Because they haven't got an easy group. You can see on the, the left of me their group, they haven't got an easy group. Obviously, we know some of the teams that they've got in it, and f results have gone their way tonight. So this, this win is even more important to them. The next game, though, one of the best games of the night, I'd say, arguably, Valencia against Zenit. It finished 2-3. Zenit winning 3-2. The first time they've ever won in Spain. And it was a win really driven by the left foot of Hulk. Hulk, the man we all know about as Zenit's kind of talisman. Great first goal. Finishes it. People saying it was a bit of a poor finish. I'm not sure. I think he, he worked it really well on his left foot. But his second goal. If you haven't seen it, you've got to go see it. An absolute thunderbolt goal off his left peg. He's an absolutely wonderful player to watch when he's on form. A magician with it that left peg that could just weave and, and produce magic when it's needed. And sometimes, yes, sometimes he's slow and lackadaisical and sloppy and doesn't really care what happens. But there are a lot, there's a lot of times where he's just unbelievable to watch on the ball. When he can shoot with his left foot, if you open it up to him, if you give him space, he's more deadly than anyone else out there. And he got two tonight. It eventually got back to two all, though. Valencia getting two goals. But Zenit did get the third one in the second half to win the game 3-2. Valencia will be really, really upset at this. I tip Valencia to go quite far in this competition. But Zenit, fair dues to them. I mean, Vias Boas has got his side set up well. They came and did a job over Valencia. Obviously, the two-goal lead, they slipped. But they, once they got to 2-all, they got back ahead straight away. And like I said, if Hulk can stay fit and stay in this kind of form, they've got a good base around him with people like Witzel. But Zenit could do something in this competition. Next game... Dynamo Kiev against Porto in Kiev. Another ground where the home support is so massive. Porto are a team I fancy to do quite well in this tournament. They've got really good players. Abubakar up front, Brahimi, players like that. And Abubakar got, got goals tonight, which led to the two-all draw, really, because Kiev were on top for large periods of the game. And I've, I'm not sure Kiev will do well in this competition. They did really well in Europa League last season. They were missing their, their main man tonight uh, in Yarmolenko. And they still managed to get a draw against a team who will be looking to go quite far in the competition, at least further than, than I think Kiev will. So, you know, Porto got to a quarter-final last year. Kiev got further in the Europa League, but can they take that form into, into the Champions League? On the basis of tonight, I think they can do, and especially with the addition of Yarmolenko when he gets back, I think that teams in that group will have to be worried. Next game, then, it was... Leverkusen against Bate Borisov. Leverkusen winning the game 4-1. And their standout man, Kala Hanglu. The man I've said will be a really, real talented player. Great on the ball. Great at free kicks. Great penalty he took. And he can do the lot. He's a real, real out-and-out -out attacking midfielder who I think will get massive interest from a lot of European clubs in years to come. He led them to this 4-1 victory. Bate did get it to one all at one stage, but just couldn't do enough to hold on. And Leverkusen really outshone them on the night. They've got a better team, and Leverkusen are doing well in the league this season, and I think they could go f quite far in this competition. But Ralf Hulstein, who was talking on the European Football Show, he was talking about the strength of Leverkusen's team this season, and it was evident on tonight's performance. Finally, though, last game we've got to talk about, the newcomers for Champions League, Ghent, playing in their first ever game in Champions League competition against their local neighbours, I guess, Lyon, for French neighbours. And Ghent went down to nine men, but still managed to draw the game 1-0. Ghent got the, the goal back after going 1-0 by, and then 
with a few minutes to go in the game. They give away a penalty. You think he may have blown it. They go down to nine men. But Alexandra Lacazette, the man who bagged all the goals for Leon last season, their talisman, their out-and-out goal scorer, fails to score the penalty. He hasn't scored so far this season for Leon, and he hasn't done it still because he missed the penalty. A great save by the goalkeeper, but he was a few yards off his line, so it should really have been retaken. But Ghent fans won't worry. Their first point in their first game in Champions League competition is massive for them. You can see now the groups to the side of me. They're the group stages as it counts for the games that happen tonight. You can see the points next to them. I've obviously put which group it is, so if you uh, want to know what's happening in each group, go there or go on UEFA.com or SoccerWay.com and you can find out what's really going on around the European leagues more in depth than what's on the screen now. But as always, please like the video, please leave your comments below and subscribe to me. I'll see you in the next one.